Hello, my name is Simon Foley. I'm from Vichy IC Market Development Team. Today, I'd like to do a live simulation of PowerCAD. I'd like to show you how it works, how to gain access, and how we can help a designer, power designer, with his power conversion. So look at, let's look at access first. You can type into a search engine, vichy.transim.com forward slash landing, into a search engine, Vichy PowerCAD, through a Vichy page from one of our distribution channels, or from our own website. So in our web page, you select products, micro back, and then it'll give you a widget where you can start the design on the top. Change your, uh, your parameters here and get, gain access straight away. There's a link from design tools and also through the data sheet itself. In the data sheet, you find the link on the top left of every micro back data sheet. So let's look at uh, PowerCAD. What, what is it? It's a free online simulation tool that allows the designer to successfully accelerate the circuit design and enhance confidence for first time success. But what does that mean? It really means that the engineer can customize, analyze, and finalize his design. Okay, what's in the power card? We've got online schematics, a calculator that calculates peripheral components, and I'll get into that a little bit later. It's got functional analysis tools, um, simple simulation where you can look at transients, startup conditions, etc. Few waveforms as you would in a lab condition with an evaluation board. It can calculate efficiency, power losses, and thermal analysis, which is pretty unique to Vichy. It'll, it'll give you a report of bill of materials, and also you can save a full design report at the end. You can send it to yourself, colleagues, or you can send it to one of our local or your local FEs for technical support. So let's start the design. First thing you get when you click into it is the disclaimer. And what this does, um, you can agree, if you want to continue, agree that we take no liability for any changes, uh, errors, inaccuracies, etc. So I'm going to say agree. The first thing you should do um, is register. Now, by registering, you register into the Vichy, uh, Vichy website, uh, not PowerCard, to so the Vichy website. And that then will allow you to save your design, retrieve it, um, et cetera. Uh, so I'm going to go into login. If you haven't already, you need to register. I've already put my details in, so I'm going to log in. And it'll take me to the first screen. And this is it. It'll take me from, or I'll take you from left to right. I'll take you from part selector, configuration, analysis, bill of materials, and reports. So there's a flow through, through the simulation tool. Again, on the top right, you see my designs, share design, save, and you can start a new design as well. So you can save your design as you go through. And I, I recommend saving this maybe every five minutes, just in case it uh, logs you out. So we're on to the first. Um, screen which is part selector you've got a widget here and you can select whatever parameters you want i want to say 4.5 to let's say 36 volts here on a v out between 0.8 and okay let's say 5.5 and a current out at 3 amps and as i change the, the filter here on the widget it will change your configuration you will give me uh, the part numbers that i can select from this and in it you can select date sheet to give you your status whether it's new active um, you can get into the data sheet this way, and it'll give you your parameters, key features, etc. Then you can look at your filters in more detail. You can select in integrated magnetics, which is our micro brick family with the integrated inductor. I'm not going to do that today. I want scalable family scalability, and what that means is the parts that underneath this, all these are pin for pin. They're all the same package size. Scalability means, for example, if I design for, if I want to design three amp, I design for three amp, and I design, and the system designers um, come back and they say they want more than three amps, they need five amps or eight amps. You can change the, uh, this one, for example, and change it with an eight amp. You can change a three amp with a five or an eight amp. You don't have to change the footprint of the PCB. Uh, it's, it's exactly the same. So that family scalability, and that's pretty unique to Vichy. I want to select power save mode because I, I want light load efficiencies. There's a drawback in this that for the improvement in light load efficiency, what it means is the frequency will fold back at light loads going into diode emulation mode. Um, but you do get a much, much improved efficiency at light loads. There's an option here for PM bus telemetry. Now, PM bus telemetry is becoming more and more popular in telecom infrastructures. 
uh, digital servers, for example, um, in high-end industrial. Um, it allows the designer more flexibility and to optimize his design, giving life performance monitoring and failure analysis. But I'm not going to do that today. This is a nice uh, filter here because you can select active, new, or pre-release. Now, if you go for just pre-release, you'll see what we're going to be releasing in the next couple of months. So you can still simulate it. You can keep an eye on it to say, okay, what's VC got coming out in the next couple of months? So you can simulate it um, just before we bring out evaluation boards. So I'm going to click active and new today. Going on to the bottom list of filters here, you can select temperature range. Um, the 150 is for our automotive range, which we'll be bringing out soon. Uh, you, can, you can select the frequency you want to set up to 4 megs. Additional features, internal compensation, for example. I'm not going to select any of these today. Package size, if, if you want to filter and drill down to specifics. And your protections, over current, over temperature, over voltage, etc. So from this filter uh, set here, it will give you a list of parts you can choose from. I'm going to select 3 amp. As I wanted to earlier, I'm not going to go into the data sheet, but I could, if I wanted to, look at the data sheet. I'm going to go into the design tab. This then will take me into the configuration. So I've done the part selector, I'm now into configuration. And in this screen, you've got the features, which is taken from our data sheet, up to 55 volts, 3 amps. I can then set my parameters, which I'll do so in, in a moment. The operating modes, which you find from the data sheet, uh, power save mode, internal, external regulator, and a description, again, taken from the data sheet. Now I'm going to start by clicking in my parameter on 24 volts to give an industrial spec, minimum 18 volts. If I, if I type something that's, that's outside the bandwidth of operation, what it will do, give me a pop-up window um, and suggesting the range that I can choose from. So I'm going to select uh, 18 volts, minimum, I'm going to select 36 volts maximum. I'm going to select a V out of 5 volts. I'm going to switch to 3 kilohertz, but you can change if you wanted to, up to 2 megs. Uh, current limit, uh, soft start, etc. I'm not going to change this. In power save mode, I've set, I want power save mode enabled because I want light load efficiency. I want the to enable the internal audio. I don't have an external rail for, for this design, but I, I could have a, if I did have a 5 volt external rail to improve efficiencies, I could disable the LD1 boot that way. In power save mode, I've got an option of ultrasonic mode. So if I select disable, it could fold back at light load into diode emanation mode, it fold back below 20 kilohertz uh, inside audio range. Uh, I don't want that, I want, it set, I want it to be outside audio range, so I'm going to say ultrasonic, it should fold back above 20k. Now, the, I've got show advanced here. Now, if you, by going into this, the nice thing is that if you're a novice, you don't have to go into the advanced. You can just select whatever you've selected here, your, your, your conversion specification. But if you are advanced and you want to change things, you can change the output caps, for example. You can say, okay, I, I want 50% ceramic, 50% uh, electrolytic, and you can select your buff caps or your ceramic caps. On this instance, I've selected uh, 10 microfarad, 100% ceramic, and I'm not going to change that. Again, in advanced, you can go down and you can select your DIDT for the load, or you can change your tolerance, your ripple, your ripple percentage, your V-out ripple, and your startup voltage too. So you've set your parameters, you've done the part selector, this is the configuration you've configured. You now want to analyze, but you press the create design. So you're now moving on into the analysis part of it, and we continue with the simulation. Again, what I would do as I go along, I would save the design. Um, once, it, once it's finished with this window, I will save the design as I go along, just in case I lose anything. And then from the analysis, you can go into efficiency and power losses. You can run simulation where you can look at load steps, where you can look at um, how the output voltage is affected by a change in load. Uh, that's what we mean by load step. And then you can look at the simulation results. If anything changes as you go along for the parameters you set, you know, on the previous screen I set 3%, it's now going to change it to 0 0.05. So it's a better output ripple. And tolerance, I've selected 2%, but it's going to give you 1.87. So it'll tell you what changes it's made in the in the simulation tool from your parameters you set. Then okay, click off that. This then will give me my schematic. And from the schematic, it will give me my list of 
um, components, peripheral components, and the values. Now, the values, the benefit of this tool is that the designer doesn't have to calculate from the data sheet all the values for uh, switching frequency, for example, the compensation, um, your output inductor. It, th this will calculate everything from these, from your, the, the parameters that you set in from your conversion. The first thing I'm going to do now is save my design. I'm going to save it into power cuts. And I'm going to save that. So that was my power card one, and I can make notes as well. You can, on the right hand part here, let me click this. On the right hand part here, you can shape tools. So you can, shape, you can draw, you can text, you can add text to this as well. And when eventually, then when you do save it and report the, your, your additions from shapes, um, text boxes, etc., will we'll upload images, will we'll be included in the schematic. I mean, the schematic, you can see voltage probes and current probes throughout. And you can change any value by double clicking. Says so you double click any value here. So you can double click, click the inductor. Okay, this gives me the inductor value, suggested inductor value. I can go here and I can change the parameters that I want. Now I can change the DCR that I want, apply filters, and it will give me a list of inductors. Um, in this instance, uh, all V shaped inductors, the peripheral components we do choose, uh, all V shaped if, if, we, if we can do it. Um, so we select these as much as possible. And I can select whatever in-depth that I want from the part number and the value, um, the inductance value in the DCR, for example. Uh, you can also want to use it defined, and you can select the inductance DCR without part numbers, just generic DCRs, inductance, and current readings if you choose to do so. On the top left, then, we've got the phase margin, so it will give you your, your stability of the, of the loop. Anything above 50 degrees is, uh, is normally pretty good. Uh, crossover uh, frequency, looking at the speed of response of the loop. Um, your phase margin and crossover are all determined by the RC here, your compensation loop, which is, which is calculated for us, saving a lot of time for the engineer. Um, we select a 24 volts to 5 volts, 3 amps out, and frequency of 300 kilohertz. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at two things. I'm going to look at efficiency and power losses, and I'm going to look at the simulation. So I'm going to look at the efficiency I've set for this parameter, but I also want to look at um, load regulation and see how the uh, load transient affects V out to see what the stability of V out is and how, how, how much it droops the, the output voltage 5 volts and how quick it responds. I'll take through that later. I'm now going to look at efficiency and power losses. Now this could take uh, a minute or 30 seconds up to a minute. Um, what this will do now is it will take me into a screen, an efficiency screen, where I can look at the efficiency, I can look at my um, the settings, and I can look at the response from uh, an efficiency point of view and a uh, power loss point of view and also a temperature point of view as well. Now, as I said earlier from the one of the first uh, screens, uh, we have efficiency, but we also have a thermal simulation tool uh, integrated into PowerCAD, uh, which is quite unique to Vichy. Um, we can look at the parameters, uh, the temperature, the power losses through the load, and then, so we can look at it from 0 amps up to, up to 3 amps. So this is the, the screen we've got here. So we're looking at um, efficiency and power losses. We're still in analysis. I can change it from dark to light if I want to print out or save it for, uh, for saving. Can we go back to dark? Here. So your marker, you see a marker on the efficiency moving left to right here. This is the efficiency response. You can, if you wanted to, look at, you can zoom in if you wanted to as well, into this to get a more detailed uh, view of uh, the efficiency at light loads up to up to 3 amps. We said zoom as well. It's got a logarithm, a logarithm big scale, and it's got a Power curve scale as well, so you can look at the power losses through the range here from three down to zero. These are the operating conditions here. So I've got 24 volts to 5 volts. My ambient, I can change as well, but it's 25 degrees. Airflow, I can add uh, airflow into it. I set 300 kilohertz, zero amp to three amp load. This is the performance and thermal analysis here. Now the therm thermal analysis is broken it down into inductor, high side, low side, and IC, and give you a temperature and your power losses. And this, the diameter of the disk here will change accordingly. The more power loss, the bigger the diameter, and the, 
lower the power losses, the smaller the diode. I think if you break down the losses in DCR, ECR core losses, ESR losses, dead time crossover, you break down all this and you give the, the operating profiles about the efficiency, the switching frequency, uh, R on high side, R on low side, you ripple, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and that will change as you change the marker here. So if I go up to the 3M towards the 3M here, this is full. So you see your, your total power loss there. And as you change from 3 amps the marker, you move it down through to zero. You can change the parameters and change your load. You'll see in the performance here, you see your load efficiency change as you go along. So you can pinpoint any part of that graph and look at the load current, the efficiency, the temperature, the losses, and break down the losses here on the switch of frequency, etc. A nice feature of this screen is Again, I would go up and save again um, before you change anything. You can set a reference, so that's set, and you can change any of these operating condition parameters. I'm gonna uh, the thing I, I, I want to look at now is I want to see how that compares, uh, how this conversion spec compares at three kilohertz to one megahertz. I want to run, I want to run the tool. So you don't have to go back to the start. You can you can stay here and compare it on this screen. And what this will do is it will give me a graph here, which will be slightly lower efficiency at um, one megahertz, and I'm going to compare it against this efficiency here, which is at 300 kilohertz. And from it again, I can I can then look at the losses. I can do exactly the same by looking at the losses, which is now set at one meg, the efficiency and the losses and the temperature. Once I've done that, I can then show a bill of material compare, and this will show a bill of material how how the Bill of materials will change from what I had set before, the 300 kilohertz to one meg. Could take a little time, maybe up to a, a minute to, to run this as well. So once I've done this, I'm then going to go into the uh, run simulation and I'm going to look at how the output voltage is affected by a, a load step of between of not amps, zero amps, uh, up to three amps to see the stability of the system. This gives me that. So, it's the, the equal. so this is the, the reference. My reference is at 300 kilohertz. The yellow line here is now the efficiency at one megahertz. And I can do exactly the same here by moving my marker from left to right and looking at this. This is the now the active. This is what I'm now seeing with thermal analysis performance operating. This is on the yellow line. It's a great way to check it. And then I can go into bill of material compare just to, to look how it compares. And this will give me what I had set at 300 kilohertz against the, this second column here, which is set at one megahertz. And if I just look at, only to show the differences, what's changed in the schematic, it won't actually change the schematic, but it'll give the bill of materials. It'll give me a change in the inductor from 15 microhenries to 4.7, as you'd expect, in, in increasing the switching frequency, the inductor value would, would reduce anyway. Your switching frequency, external resistor set, it changes from 8.7 to 26, uh, as it would from the, from the calculations in the data sheet. Okay, go back there. I can go back to review the design at any time, and that would, be, that would take me back to my schematic diagram again. So I, I've looked at this. I'm not going to look at simulation results yet because I haven't, I haven't run it in simulation. So I'm going to open this page. Um, from this, then, I can look at steady state, load step, startup. Now, load step is an output load uh, change um, from one current level to another current level, and I'll, I'll do that in a moment. I can, as I said on the schematics here, you've got voltage and current probes throughout. So you can look at the your scope captures, and this is where it takes the measurements from. Actually, I can look at that. So I can change my scope probes and I can move the scope probes. I can relay them, etc. etc. I don't need to do that in this case. I, I want to look at load step only, but you could look at steady state and start up. And you could look, you could change the load here from zero. One thing I look at zero, you can't put zero in terms of zero point one amps to three amps. I've got a load step of three amps and a period of five microseconds. So that's what I'm going to do. And you can change your delays and everything if you want to fine tune the, the load step here. You can also change your, your V in supply. You can look at pulse voltages as well. So you can look at line regulation and load regulation. I'm just going to look at load regulation here. I'm going to 
set this up. So I'll check the box one step. I don't want to look at steady state startup. I'm going to look at this. I've set my parameters and I'm going to run the simulator. And what this will do is from the probe, score probes on the schematic, it will give you uh, your scope captures as you would in the lab. And you can see up here, you can see it moving from left to right to show uh, how far it's got to go. It will still give you your phase margin if you want to go out here. This could take uh, up, to, up to a minute, 30 seconds to a minute, depending on your uh, speed of Wi-Fi. Once it's done this, I'll take you to some of um, some of the ca uh, captures we've seen. Okay, it's almost opening. Right, from this one now, you see the scope um, captures from output. You could look at input, IC, and switching. For purposes of this exercise, I only want to look at the output, and I want to look at how the output voltage changes or is affected by a change in load step. So I don't see high supply, so I'll get rid of that on the right hand side. I don't see the uh, output ceramic. Uh, current either. I want to see I load, which is the black line here, and I load is from zero amps up to three amps here at this point. V out is up here, a little bit difficult to see at this time, so I'll, I'll explain that a little bit more in a moment. And I also want to see your inductor current as well. So the red is your inductor current as you're switching up here. And this, the, the, efficient, the, the frequency, you would, as you would expect, uh, with constant on time topology, increases with the load step and reduces with zero current, with the lower current. So what I want to see is this. I want to see how how the output changes with a load step of zero to three amps, and this is the this is the thing I want to see here. So you can either zoom in, um, or there are you can change your scale of your axis by going into this here. But there's a nice check button on the right hand, on the left hand side here, which is auto zoom, auto scale, and it will scale it. To look like this is exactly what I want to see. So this button here is, is a nice little cheat to go straight to auto scale. Again, it will zoom in on everything. It will look at your inductor current, the load step in black here, which is zero to three, and you will look at the output voltage. And you're looking at, I want to see how this V out of five volts is affected by the change in load. On the left hand side, I've got um, select mode. So if I press that, I can draw a box and zoom in. I can Drag here, if I press this, I can drag left and right, zoom in and out. I can go forward, backwards, etc. I can download and save a file. Um, and I want to see, the next thing I want to see on this one is the drop, the drooping voltage and the, the, the speed of response till it settles again. And as a normal scope, you've got markers here. So I want to set the top marker, each one to midpoint here. Okay, so that's five volts as was set, and I want to check the bottom marker here to the bottom here. So this is the, the droop, the, the maximum droop it goes to minimum voltage. So 5 volts to 4.94, that's the droop you get in the out with a low step of 0 to 3 amps. And to be more accurate, I can go down here and I can see V out here on the bottom left. Marker 1 is 5, uh, marker 1 sorry, is 5 here, marker 2 is 4.94. But if you select this and you go delta, H markers, it will give you your delta here. So 58 millivolts droop with a load step between three, 0 and 3. It's exactly what I'm looking for. Time wise, I can go here and I can select, select your vertical marker here in the time of the load. I can do the same as you would with a digital scope. I can look at this and say, okay, it will settle at this point here. And there's, and there's the information on time, V marker 1 marker two and again I can do a click on this one and I can look at delta v marker one v marker two here and this will give me the time in seconds here to settle so this is the settling time from when the transit occurs to when the v out settles back to five volts now if I if I carry on through left to right and I select bill of materials etc etc it won't um, it won't save this. It won't save this uh, amended screen here, this amended uh, scope capture. So what I need to do, and I, I think it's a it's a nice feature, is including report. So I want to include in report, and I'll select that to V out, and I'll apply, and I'll say, do you want to overwrite what was there before? I, what was there before was I supply 
and ceramic covered as well. I don't didn't want to see that, so I'm going to say yes. I want to see that, and then I can go into simulation results, and it will give me my simulation results here. It will give me transient response, um, output, input, IC, switching, etc., and that will be included in the report at the end. I could, if I wanted to, go back to look at view design, which would take me into the schematic uh, as I saw before. So I've done that. I've looked at the efficiencies and the losses. I've looked at my transit response with the, with the load step. Um, and then, I, again, I want to save. I can save again just to make sure I don't lose anything. And the next thing I'll do is I'll go into a bill of materials. And this will take me into the bill of materials uh, page. You give me a list of part numbers and the values and the description, the manufacturer. We use as much V share as we possibly can. And we use an alternative if we don't have something. And you see it in stock and price. So it is a nice way of looking at um, stock levels if you want to order. So you can select this. And this one is set to Moza. You can select Farnell, for example. Uh, Net, Net, or, and you can look at what each catalog distributor will have. So on this one, there's nothing available. I'm going to select just for curiosity what element 14 has. And you can see <clears throat> on this, some, uh, some are in stock and there's a, there's a price. I can also. Um, download an Excel bill of materials as well and save it uh, onto my onto my notepad, my notebook if I if I need to. So I've done that, and the next thing I'm going to do is go up to report. So I've done my simulation. I've got the results I want, and I'm going to go into this. This is my report. It gives me the configuration I've set. It gives the bill of materials. Also, it gives me the schematic. I'm sorry. It gives me the bill of materials here. And it'll give me my scope captures from my analysis here. Efficiency and power losses. And it will give the, the disclaimer as well. So everything's here that I've looked at earlier. I can print off, I can save as PDF, or I can share my design. And if I share my design, you can email it to Vichy Tech Support with a comment. You can email it to a colleague or e even email it to yourself as well so you can look at it. And there's an option here for permission to read right from the, the person you sent it to and we can send it back to you with uh, any amendments. Thanks very much for listening.